And life happens, like a husband on the busiest week of the year who decides that week to get deathly ill and not be here with us. Anybody else got the upper respiratory thing going around? It's taking people out, Steve's waving in the back. And then there's all the bulletin planning that happens, and believe me, there was a lot, and we still make Sylvia a Schultz today instead of a Schultz and an organist instead of an organist. Life happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps happening. And, and if we go back to the first part of this story, we've got Mary and Joseph who have just gotten through getting this crazy news of a birth, of a pregnancy, of a birth to come, um, completely out of wedlock. And they've spent all the social capital they didn't have just working through and fighting tooth and nail to figure out how to manage all of this. Because let's face it, if your best friend was pregnant and came into it, it was Jesus. You're gonna, it was God coming in the form of Jesus. I got my theology wrong there. Are you with me? All right. It was God. You're going to be like, what? I don't think so. So Mary and Joseph finally got it all figured out, right? They were in it together. They had their resolve. They maybe even had a birth plan and a midwife lined up. And Joseph, being his carpenter self, I'm sure had a little something special created for the baby and then life happens again, and there's a census ordered, and they have to leave at probably the most inconvenient and dangerous time. And so Mary and Joseph go from Bethlehem to Bethlehem, from all that they had planned and prepared for in Nazareth. And they got there, and it was still crazy. There wasn't any room. And they're going around trying to find it. And at this point, I don't know about you all, but I would just lose it. That would be it for me. Because of the amount of wrangling that these two had to do, and then more and more and more was required of them just when they thought they had made it through and gotten to a place they could manage and they could handle, again the bottom falls out and again they have to figure out their footing and try some way to move forward. But move forward they did and move forward God did and Jesus was born. It wasn't the birth that was planned, but he was safe, Mary was safe, Joseph made it through, all right, and Jesus was born. And for me, this is the good news of Christmas, that in the midst of an occupied country where those in power were moving those around without power at will, where people were being taxed beyond probably the resources they had left, where there was no place to stay to even get through the mess of life that had been made, Jesus was still born. And if it can happen once, then why can't that miracle happen again and again and again? That in the midst of our messiness, in the midst of a city full of people maxed to their margin, in the midst of life not working out the way it should, Jesus is born. At this moment, God is Emmanuel, God with us. And I think that's the gift. And I think it's our call to figure out how we do these journeys from Nazareth to Bethlehem, from having things planned to life that happens. I think what God asks of us is to be faithful. I don't think it's more than that, like a perfectly orchestrated birth or plan for however and whatever our call is to work out. But I also don't think it's anything less than our faithfulness, because Mary and Joseph did take that journey and did make that risk and did and were present for God to work through. And I think it's in those moments, too those Bethlehem surprise moments, that God does the work that only God can do. And when we open ourselves to be faithful in those moments, those are the times that we grow ourselves to. 
and our faith takes even deeper root and we're able to grow and respond in faithfulness more and more and God is able to accomplish more and more through us, meaning God is able to be more and more present in this world. I think it's a calling for all of us And it's those fun, ironic moments that we have when we get to those Bethlehem surprises. Because Bethlehem, the city's name means house of bread. So for all of the planning of the birth that Mary and Joseph did with Jesus in Nazareth, God worked through a moment, not ordained by him, but by another ruler exercising power for another reason, trying to put together a Roman peace that wasn't quite the peace that God was after and was working to build through Jesus. But still in that moment, in that house of bread, the bread of life was born. And those are the moments where we know God is at work, where everything lines up just as it is falling apart. And those are the miracles that are about as awe-inspiring as they are terrifying because those are the moments where we are out of control and out of our depth. But there is a God who is at work. There is a God who is being born. There is a God who is present. And so for all that life throws our way, for all of the journeys that we will have to take as Bethlehem comes to surprise us and upend our very neatly planned Nazareths. Christ is born. Christ is born, and that is a truth that, that no planned Nazareth and no surprise Bethlehem can ever change. But it is a truth that will change every Bethlehem and even every Nazareth. Because our assurance is this, is that unto us a child is born, that God has chosen to be Emmanuel, to take on life with us, and not waiting for life that is all neatly and perfectly put together, but to be in the midst of life exactly when we need God the most, when our margins are fried, when everything is falling apart and going wrong, God is with us. So may we respond in faithfulness that God can give us as well. And may this unfolding that we're celebrating tonight Give us a taste of the joy and the hope and the peace and the love that God is sowing and bringing about. And may that taste buoy our souls enough that we are able to take those cranky journeys to Bethlehem and see them transformed into moments that we wouldn't trade in for the world. Amen.